I will bless the Lord at all times, and the Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt the Lord's name together. We're delighted to welcome you to the Sunday worship experience of the Gilfield Baptist Church of Petersburg, Virginia. We're so happy you joined us by whatever platform that you are engaging today. We pray that the music and the message would minister to our hearts.
of praise who've helped all of us to raise our voice in praise and thanksgiving to a God who is so good to us. I invite you to turn with me to the book of Genesis, the eighth chapter, and we'll begin reading at verse six. After 40 days, Noah opened a window. He'd made it in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find nowhere to perch because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. Noah reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. Noah waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. Noah waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. I want to tag this text, Faith to Try Again. Now, O God, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Many times we forget that we're not the first generation to have to wait. In fact, this passage of Scripture is simply a testament to the fact that others before us, and no doubt those who will come after us, will have to learn the important and vital lesson of waiting. Many times we get tired of waiting. We get exhausted, frustrated, discouraged by waiting. And this is where Noah helps us. For you see, Noah is a wonderful case study in waiting. Noah helps us because he waits 120 years to build the ark and to see it to completion. 40 days, he waits for the storm to cease. Four months for the ark to dock atop Mount Ararat. Three months before the mountaintops could be seen above the water. Forty days he opens the window to send out the raven and the dove. And then 14 more days for the dove mission one and dove mission two to declare all dry. Noah, I tell you, is a wonderful case study on how to wait. 
and you thought you had it rough. Saints of old used to sing a song, even in this very church, you can't hurry God. No, you just have to wait. You've got to trust God and give God time, no matter how long it takes. God is a God. You can't hurry, but God will be there. Don't you worry. God may not come when you want God, but God is always on time. And so I want to encourage you today that while you're waiting, you're waiting for the economy to improve. You're waiting for the health report to come back. You're waiting for the all clear that you can resume what seems to be life as normal again. You're waiting for something that's beyond your reach and out of your control. And you're tired, you're discouraged, you're frustrated, you're anxious. And I want to share with you that Noah helps us because Noah was in the same place we were. And Noah, just like us, was mere mortals simply trying to connect with God and please God and relate to our community and love our families. And yet Noah is bound by what seems to be a never-ending cycle of waiting. Now, let's look at Noah's situation. Noah is confined. He's quarantined shut in. He's accompanied by his wife, their three sons, and their three daughters-in-law. Not to mention a boat full of animals and crops, noises and smells, work and monotony, variety and boredom. Quarantine, but no privacy. Locked in, couldn't go out, but Noah shows us that he can go up. My friend, don't forget, you can go up. The Bible says that Noah built a window. And while you're waiting, while you're waiting to see how things will shape out in life, while you're going through uh, virtual worship experience, and before you tune to the next worship experience, I invite you to ask yourself, have I built a window in my confinement? Have I built a window for the situation I'm in today? Have I built a window? I mean, you've thought of everything else. You've got your resume. You've got your contacts list. You've got everything spaced out, your mask, your gloves, your hand sanitizer. You have everything. I want to ask you, have you built a window? Oh, I want to encourage you to build a window. Don't stay down in the basement of your situation. You've got to go up to where you built a window. Can I borrow just five items from Noah to help us? Five items. A window, a raven, and three doves. I'll call the window his place of prayer and uh, his four-winged messengers his prayers, his communication both to and from God. I want to invite you to get a prayer place. You see, it was going to rain, and that rain was a sign of God's judgment on wickedness and people who refused to live according to the plan of God, who refused to love and love justice and mercy. And so God punishes those who would do evil in God's sight to one another. But God always has a place of grace. The ark was a place of grace. It didn't take Noah a week to build the ark or a year to build the ark, 120 days to finally construct a vessel that represents grace. Oh, you do know that the place of grace is outfitted for more than just Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their three wives. The place of grace is for anybody who wants to be in right relationship with God and with humanity. It took him 120 years to build grace in his life, to see grace, to touch grace, to offer grace. You, you think that in your current situation, you're struggling, You've got animosity, 
You don't know how you should feel. And yet, as a believer, as a child of God, you're wondering, how come you can't get it together? How come your thoughts don't always seem as loving as they ought to be? How come your words don't seem to be as spiritually seasoned as you would like them to be? I want to tell you something. You've got to be patient with yourself and God who's giving you instruction because grace takes time. And the ark represents not grace that will allow him to float like a raft, but to survive and thrive in the storm. As you're building your grace base, build a window. Because when the storms come, you're going to need a window. You're going to have to have a place to pray. Imagine all of those different personalities, all of those arguments and different opinions and decisions that had to be made, and yet they were confined and quarantined, and there was really no place they could go, no place to go without work, no place to go where they could simply be alone, no place to go to escape. And everything, day after day, is the same thing. And if you focus on everything below your situation and around your situation, then you're going to miss the opportunity that going up to the window will provide. So you've got to have a window in your confinement. You've got to have a window in your situation. A window allows you to see up. A window allows you to see out. A window allows you to see light. A window lets you know when it's dark around you. A window allows you to glimpse glory and to communicate with God. You gotta build yourself a window since you can't use the door. And don't worry, the door will open. But you gotta have a window until you can get to the door. You can look out the window until you can cross the threshold. You need to have a door, a place that's uninterrupted and undisturbed where you can talk to God in the midst of your quarantine, in the midst of your confinement, in the midst of the situation that seems to be the same thing day after day after day after day after day. Since you've got this pause time, since you're reflective, since you're wondering what to do, I want to encourage you to build a window. Build a window to God. You don't have to understand all of who God is. You don't have to become an overnight scholar of the scriptures. But if you build a window, just a small window that allows you to glimpse God's glory, that allows the light of God's uh, countenance to shine on you, a window that allows you to look up even when you're locked in. Build yourself a window. And it's not just a window for you to talk out of pleading and asking, but it's a window that allows you to listen, think, and receive. Let me rewind and say that again. The window is not just you talking, pleading, and asking. But the window is also the place where you listen, think, and receive. Yes, the window allows you to yell out loud, God, help me. God, why am I going through this? God, I'm upset and angry. But don't think that that window won't allow you to get God's response to anything that you offer out of the window that you made. Because as you talk to God, God communicates back to you. As you're talking to God, God is listening. But when God talks back to you, God wants you thinking. God wants you to understand what God is saying to you. God wants you to receive it. And that's the hard part. See, praying is simply talking, pleading, asking. But it's also listening, thinking, and receiving. Prayers is when we pray and communicate. Prayer is when we communicate giving and receiving. And that's sometimes where the problem is. Because we don't like the response, the reply, the answer 
to the question, to the problem, to the situation that we pose to God through the window. The first messenger Noah sends out, it comes back to him. And Noah doesn't take it in. He lets it go back and forth. You see, Noah wanted that first message to be, everything is clear, the coast is clear, the land is dry, I'll open the door, and you can begin your new life, your normal for now. You can get back to life as it was before that situation occurred. And God's response is it's not time yet. God's response is that there's still an opportunity for us to keep talking back and forth. No, you're going to be where you are a little while longer. And so Noah says, I don't accept that. And so Noah leaves that messenger to go back and forth. He never takes it in. But then I'm glad that that wasn't the only communication that Noah initiated. See, when you pray and things don't happen lightning fast, at lightning speed, we tend to get discouraged. We don't want to hear anything that God has to say. We don't want to hear anything the Bible teaches. We don't want to hear any sermon. We don't want to hear any believer trying to get us to keep talking to God. But Noah shows us that even when you don't get the response that you were hoping to get, you know, what we call sometimes erroneously the answer to our prayer. And God always answers our prayer. Sometimes the answer is yes, that's the one we want. Sometimes the answer is wait, that's what we don't want. And sometimes the answer is no, and that's where we get discouraged. That's where we give up, and that's where we close God out and shut the window. And anybody who doesn't have a window has said, I don't want to hear what God has to say, and I'm not talking to God. I'm in this situation, and I'll figure it out by myself. But a window allows you to vent and to express to God, I need some help in my situation. When is this going to change? And God sends a reply, not yet. But God, I have taken every resource that I've ever had, every ambition that I've ever had and put it on a shelf and I've built a place of grace, a monument of your mercy and only my wife, our three sons and our three daughters-in-law, a few animals and crops have taken us up on that offer. But I was faithful, God, and I waited. And then the storm came. One or two hours, that would have sufficed, but it went on. One week turned into two weeks. Two weeks turned into a month. One month went out 10 days more. Nonstop storm raindrop after raindrop, pellet after pellet, until it was eerily quiet, reminding us that those on the outside of your grace no longer cry out, no longer struggle. That eerie silence, and yet the storm still rages on, and you wonder how you're going to make it through. And that's where Noah was. And Noah sends a request. Lord, let this be the time that I can get out of this situation. The response comes back, not yet. Not yet. But he sent another communication. Still the answer, not yet. But this time... There's the understanding that it's really not about Noah and that while Noah navigated the ship, Noah doesn't direct the course. And so Noah waits seven days 
and then Noah waits another seven days. Now the seven days after the first communication said no, there was a no, but there was an optimism that the message came back and that God is still communicating with me even if what you're hoping to turn around doesn't turn around keep talking to God because God will respond to you even if it's the same reply to what you asked seven days ago the line of communication is open the window is still here I'm still here you can still talk to God. He waits seven days. And there is a glimmer of hope. There's a change. There's something he didn't expect. There's a message. There's an olive branch. That suggests that God always sends us messages of peace. God always lets us know that no matter how bad the storm is, no matter how broken our heart is, no matter how troubled our mind is, God always responds with an olive branch to say that everything is going to be all right and I've sustained you through this. I will continue to sustain you and just so you don't forget, here's an olive branch, not a dried olive branch, but a fresh olive branch. I'll let you know that in the morning you will see a brand new mercy from me to you reminding you, keep coming to the window and keep talking to me. Some might get discouraged and some might settle on that olive branch and say, well, there's no need to go back to God to talk anymore. Noah sends out another message. Lord, I'm ready to get out of this and to experience life, whatever normal used to look like. And then... It appears as though there's no message. There's no response. He sends a prayer. But this time, it doesn't come back. Don't think that God's silence means God's absence. Don't think that God's silence means that you somehow wasting your time that God has abandoned you. No, you see, when you discover the kind of prayer and communication with God, you discover that God always finds a place for your last communication. God hears what we need and God responds with what we need and then he waits and then he goes forward. Noah communicated with God. God communicates back to Noah. God never gets frustrated with Noah praying the same prayer and essentially asking for the same thing, just in a different way. And Noah did not quit. I used to sing a song when I was growing up in Los Angeles. An old preacher by the name of Reverend Eugene D. Smallwood used to sing, if you can just hold out until tomorrow. If you can just... Keep the faith through the night. If you can just hold out until tomorrow. And I'm not sure when tomorrow will come. Tomorrow may come 40 days from now. Tomorrow may come six months from now. Tomorrow may come a week after that. But if you can just hold out, keep talking to God at that window, everything, and I do mean everything, will be all right. Don't give up. Don't lose faith in God. And don't lose faith in the hope that God has planted within you, even in the circumstance that you find yourself. Have the faith to try again. Talk to God again. Worship God again. Connect with others again attempt and even risk failure again. No, it helps us. Wait on God. Go to that window, talk to God, and wait for God to reply, 
and seek to understand what God is saying to you because God already understands what we're saying to God and watch everything would be all right. My friend, it's been a while since we've been able to gather in person. We've not been able to reach out and physically touch as we go to God in prayer. But I invite you, wherever you are, take a moment to stop what you're doing if you're able, and let's approach God's throne of grace together. We know that we faced many circumstances this past week. Not only are we ever so anxious and terrified of the effects of the coronavirus, we're reeling and wondering just what tomorrow will bring in light of this pandemic, with the economic despair, with the spike in cases across the country, and with the grieving hearts, not just in our country, but all around the world, we seek God's guidance and we invite God to intervene. Not only that, but the normal course of life, families that need to stay together, minds that were already troubled, now with the added burden of this hour. We pray that people who are not able to connect and celebrate, people who have decisions to make and are uncertain as to what the right course of action will be, we invite you, my sister, my brother, to come with us as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, we give you praise for being who you are. You're the God who loves us, the God who is the mastermind of all that we see, hear, and experience. God, we invite you into our space today. We invite you into our hearts, our homes. We invite you into our business that we might focus our thoughts on your plans and on your purpose. God, we failed to do so many of the things that your word teaches us. So we ask, oh God, that you will grant us the grace and the forgiveness that we might go forth from this moment stronger than ever before. We pray, oh God, that you will guide us, not just in this moment, but in every moment that will come. Guide us into all truth surround us with love and cause us to be your ambassadors of love and grace and peace. God, we pray for healing today, healing in our society of the social justice wounds. We pray, oh God, for sickness to be cured, not just the sickness that doctors and scientists are working on, but the sickness that pervades the human experience, hatred, violence, war. We pray, O oh God, that you will use us and send us forth, give us courage, that we might be your ambassadors of peace and of love. O oh God, we pray for those families who have lost loved ones, whose hearts are heavy, tears fill their eyes at this moment, and God, we ask that you will comfort them and use us to be comforting agents. God, we pray for those whose economic forecast does not look good, who struggled to make it through last week, but as we face this new week, they're not sure how they're going to make it. God, we ask that you will be a provider, that you will be a sustainer, and that you will cause us to flourish and not to perish. God, we thank you for the mountains that you've allowed us to climb. We thank you for guiding us through the valleys of life. Thank you, O oh God, for what you've given to us in this day. You're by our side. You're in our hearts. You're on our minds. And you hear us when we pray. O oh God, bless us. 
Grant us this week your joy, your favor. Grant us the opportunity to be wonderful representatives of a loving God. Thank you, O oh God, for Jesus who saves us and redeems us from all sin. God, we love you and we give your name praise. We ask that you will bless us even if we fail to ask, you know our hearts and our minds, and you will provide. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we come to a close, we invite you to reach out to us. If you've got a question about the faith, if you'd like to know more about how you can invite the Lord Jesus into your heart, into your life to be your Lord and Savior, we invite you to call us at 804 895-0213. We'd be happy to share with you how your life can be all that God meant it to be. If you'd like to support this ministry with a financial donation, we invite you to give an offering. Text us at 73256 and key in the message G-B-C-G-I-V-E. -E. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you. And as always, Go in peace.